Hey everybody, it's Allie. Welcome to my channel. I am here today to introduce to you a tarot exercise that I have created called the Hero's Journey Tarot Challenge. Now I have designed this to be a tarot challenge for Instagram, about 30 questions for 30 days. So it's based on the model of those Instagram tarot challenges. If you've ever participated in those, I think they are absolutely a fantastic way to exercise your tarot skills. So I have designed one um, based on Joseph Campbell's The Hero's Journey. I have been diving into this philosophy. I find it absolutely fascinating and I incorporate this philosophy into my own tarot practice. Now, this exercise is not only for Instagram, but it's also a supplement exercise for my webinar that I'm hosting on August the 20th. It's totally free. It'll be broadcast live on Facebook, but it will be recorded. I will upload it later. And my webinar is called The Sacred Wisdom of Geek Culture. And it's based on Campbell's philosophies on the hero's journey. So we see the hero's journey not only in ancient myth and fairy tales and old stories, but also our modern day stories and comic books and video games and all of our um, you know, our, our favorite movies that we see on TV, our novels, it's all there. All of our favorite stories incorporate this model. And Joseph Campbell, um, not only was it kind of, you know, a, an observation that he made in storytelling, but he felt like it was a mirror, that we use stories to, as a mirror, as a reflection of our own human experience. And we look to our heroes for guidance on um, what is admirable, what is detestable, what is right and wrong, for lessons of love and courage and fear. And all of that is encompassed in this hero's journey. And so I'm just gonna be here to explain uh, the exercise that I've created and, and how it relates to, the, I just felt like I needed more explanation um, of the question. So I will introduce this in my webinar, but I felt like there wasn't enough time in the webinar. I'm packing a lot, a lot of information into this hour and a half already, and I didn't want to waste too much more time going through every question. So I'm creating this second video to kind of go into more depth and more detail about um, this exercise um, called, well, I'm calling it the Hero's Journey Tarot Challenge because I'm designing it. I'm going to be putting it on Instagram. So I encourage you guys to participate. But let me go through the questions and I will tell you how you can apply this in a variety of different ways. You don't just have to do it on Instagram if that doesn't appeal to you. So let me start with part one. So I've divided this exercise into three parts. So three parts because the hero's journey has three parts. There's part one, which is the, the departure or the call to adventure. Part two is the initiation, which is where all the excitement and the drama happens. And then part three is the return. So what happens after the adventure is over and you return back home again? So part one, and I'll have all these questions listed. As I said, they'll be available on Instagram at my webinar, as well as I'll probably do a blog post about it. But here I'm creating a video just to explain, hopefully in more detail, what exactly I'm getting at with these questions, just in case they were ambiguous or you weren't sure what I meant. So let's start. Question number one. Who are you at the beginning? So the beginning of the journey, before anything happens, who are you now? Pretty simple. Okay. Question number two. What dissatisfies you about your current circumstances? So usually at the start of every adventure, every story, there's kind of a restlessness or something isn't sitting right with the hero. Something, there's there's like this need, like, like a snail who's about to outgrow their shell. Um, it's time to expand, to grow, to move on to something bigger and better. So what is currently dissatisfying you about your current circumstances? And the answer might be nothing. Maybe you're completely content with the status quo, but maybe you're sensing the universe wants more from you, so it's going to start shaking things up a little bit, which happens when we get too comfortable, we get booted out of our comfort zone by forces outside of ourselves. So question number three, how do you receive the call to adventure? Is it a blunder, an invitation, or are you forced? So those are the three most common things that happen in storytelling um, that 
that start the adventure. This is the the initiation or or the call, the initial call to the adventure. So a blunder, for example, happens a lot in fairy tales, um, where something goes terribly wrong, or somebody walks in and sees something they shouldn't have seen, and now you know someone's out to destroy the witness, or um, somebody makes a promise that they can't keep and they piss off the wrong witch and now they're cursed and so that starts the adventure so that would be a blunder. Blunders are often also really really common in superhero stories um, basically any hero that discovered his powers later on and wasn't born with them is because of a blunder some terrible science experiment gone horribly wrong and the aftermath is that one regular guy ends up with supernatural abilities. So that would be a, an example of a blunder. Some big mistake, something goes terribly wrong. An invitation, well, somebody knocks on your door and is like, hey, I have this opportunity. Do you, do you want to come with me? Um, you know, Harry Potter receives his invitation from Hogwarts. It's an invitation to start an adventure. And then the third one, forced, doesn't happen as often, but an example of a forced call to adventure would be um, being drafted into war. Okay, question number four, what is your quest on this adventure? So what is it that you're being asked to do? Usually there's a task, some, um, yeah, some quest that you have to achieve that will end the adventure. You have some objective that you're trying to achieve. And often, the you know the thing you sign up for in the beginning isn't what you end up having to do in the end it often snowballs or becomes bigger than you anticipated um but in the beginning what is it that you're signing up for what do you think you're about to get into or what is the objective you are trying to achieve question number five what fears or what maybe it's not a fear but there's it's usually a fear it's usually some kind of fear that deters you from accepting the quest so often in storytelling very often actually um they get their call to adventure the hero receives the call and then they're like mm, i don't think i'm the guy for the job or they're too afraid or they don't think they're good enough or it can't be true um, the prophecy is not about me, you know, whatever it is. There's always some part where they're like, they have some self-doubt. So what is it that deters you from initially accepting what's putting you off about it? Question number six, who will advise or mentor you on this journey? So in every great tale, there is often some wise older person often it's an old man who has like wizard like powers <laughs> who's been around for a while who's seen a lot in their time and convinces the hero that this quest or this adventure is in their best interest or in the best interest of everyone, you know, save the world kind of thing. But it's the mentor or this old man or this wizard character who convinces the hero, you really should, you should do this, you should go. And often um, bestows some kind of gift or a weapon or a tool that the hero can take on their journey that becomes useful at some point in the story. So that happens quite a bit, just look for it. <laughs> so who is your mentor? Who is the one that convinces you you need to go on this quest, you need to do this journey? Question number seven, what finally motivates you to accept the quest? So yeah, what was it? What was the clincher? What was it that sold you? What was it that you went, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll do it. That made you brave or whatever it was that made you commit. You're doing this. What was it that finally motivated you? Question number eight. Who or what friends, allies, sidekicks support you on your journey? So nobody succeeds alone. Um, nobody learns in isolation. You always need 
people, friends, allies, you need a support group. So who is there to support you on the journey? And question nine, what tools, weapons, or resources will aid you? So often, it's like I said, it's given to you by the mentor, but not always. Um, sometimes you have it with you all the time. Sometimes you find it along the way. But there's something that you have tangible, intangible, that will aid you. So what is it? What are the tools, weapons, and resources that you use on this adventure? And question number 10, what feelings do you experience as you step outside, you cross the threshold from your known territory to the unknown territory? This is where it gets scary. So you might be going through a lot of emotions as you cross that threshold um, into this uncomfortable zone and on your way to this adventure. What, what are you feeling as you take that first step and you, you've proven to yourself you are committed. What's going What's going on emotionally? Okay. So now we enter part two. So now we've, we're out of the common world. We're out of the world that we've known, that we're comfortable with. This is our comfort zone. We have stepped outside. Now we are in part two, the initiation phase. This is where all the fun stuff happens or the scary stuff. <laughs> Thinking about all this stuff is what prevents us from leaving in the beginning, but this is what we need to go through in order to grow and elevate ourselves. So question number 11. So 11, 12, and 13 are basically all the same. Describe the first trial, second trial, and third trial. So in every great story, you know, things don't just happen smoothly. There's always little obstacles along the way, things that go wrong. Um, challenges that we have to overcome so what and they usually come in threes so three challenges what are three challenges trials obstacles that you have to face <clears throat> on this journey question 14 identify the animus anima power within you or without you um, but something that gives you strength on your journey okay so um, one of the themes that Joseph Campbell identified in his monomyth was a, a pairing or an encounter with somebody of the opposite sex. So someone of the opposite gender than you identify with um, brings some kind of balance to you and you draw strength from that person um, or it, it could be internal, it could be the quality that comes out of you that you didn't know was in you. Um, but it, it's this masculine feminine balance. And so some examples, you know, like Luke Skywalker meets Leia. Um, she is his sister, his twin. Um, she's also a Skywalker. She has, you know, he's the one that seems to struggle with the self-doubt. And she just kind of keeps doing her duty, keeps the brave face. She's never really tempted like he is. Um, so he looks to her as a kind of strength. So that would be that pairing, that balance of masculine and feminine. Um, we see that in the Hunger Games. Katniss has PETA, which balances her out. He has qualities she doesn't possess and vice versa. So there's this balance. So um, yeah, identify the anima or animus power that creates balance and strength on your journey. So here's an example, because when I was creating this, I before I finalized it and thought, yeah, this is good, I did kind of a test run and I just banged out 30 cards just to see if it all worked. And I got this really cool story out of it. It wasn't really for me necessarily, but it, I did get this story. And basically the story was about an unexpected pregnancy and how all the all the trials and things that they had to deal with. And when I got to so the third trial had to do with the husband. Actually, I have to explain the second trial to explain the third trial. So the, the second trial was I drew this card and it was like this like kind of overweight person just stuffing their face. And so immediately I thought, okay, this is about body image. This is about bodily changes and feeling like you have all the weight. As the woman, the responsibility, you're the one who's feeling self-conscious and overweight and <laughs> not really used to your body being like this. And then the next card was this skinny man with a big smirk on his face, kind of 
keeping to himself and enjoying what he was doing. And so immediately I felt like, okay, this is the husband. The wife is seeing this as the, the male partner and he is looking skinny. And so there's this, I sense there was this jealousy and this resentment that he was doing his own thing, that he wasn't carrying his weight or his burden. And that was another trial that had to be overcome. And then I drew, and I can't remember what card it was, but right after that was this anima, animus thing. And basically the message that came out of it was instead of looking at the husband as, um, you know, being jealous of him, that he doesn't have to suffer as much or that he's just enjoying himself and it's not fair that he gets to do whatever he wants and be skinny and play games while you are doing all the worrying. Instead of looking at it like that, use the husband as a role model because it's not that he doesn't care about other people. It's just that he's an expert on um, self-care. And so if you can use him as a role model of self-care and say, you know, if he's not worrying, I'm not worrying. Um, I can do things that I enjoy too, just like he is, instead of seeing it as this negative, jealous, resentful relationship, use him as a role model. So that was what came, that was what came out of my kind of trial <laughs> reading. I'm just giving you as an example of um, uh, and, and that balance of masculine and feminine that comes into play in the hero's journey. Okay, question 15. What temptations try to discourage you from completing the quest? Okay, so there's always some sort of temptation and it manifests in a variety of different ways. It can be woman as a temptress, um, just, you know, the femme fatale <laughs> distracting you with her womanly wiles from the quest. It could be the temptation to just give up, um, to, I don't want this burden anymore. I am tempted to just leave and quit and accept failure. <laughs> that it can be that kind of temptation, but um, usually there's some sort of temptation that tries to lure you away from fulfilling your quest and your objective. So what is that temptation that you are faced with in your journey? Question 17. No, sorry, question 16. Okay, so how do you overcome that temptation? So we've identified what the temptation is. What is it that you need to do or what is it that you did to um, resist the temptation. Question 17, what is the dragon that you must slay to complete your quest? Okay, so this is the big, this is the big villain. This is that big overpowering um, huge monster, the power. Now it can be something external, but it can also be, it's usually, you know, in our storytelling, it's always some big dragon or some villain, villain we have to slay, but it's usually within ourselves. And if you look at stories like Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings, for example, um, there's this element of if I, in order to kill the villain, I have to kill a part of myself. I have to kill myself. And that's that's the big scary part is are you willing are you willing to do that? Are you willing to make that sacrifice? Um, anyway, there's some power. So this is big threatening power that looms over you that's that you've always felt you know you can't live up to or you've been subordinate to or subservient to. and this is the moment where no more. it's it's do or do not. there is no try. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then question um, 18 is, how do you overpower the dragon? What is it that you do? What is that magic moment um, that ultimately proves that you have power over the dragon and not the other way around? Question 19, what wisdom or power have you gained as a result? And question 20, what's the treasure or the reward you have earned as a result. So slightly different questions. Um, usually the treasure or reward is something that you can um, share with others. Um, you know, Luke Skywalker destroys the Death Star. The threat 
is over. No one has to fear it anymore. It's done. Um, Indiana Jones <laughs> gets the Holy Grail and the Ark of the Covenant, and he brings those back to the people. So what treasure, it can be literal or, or figurative, you know, what is the treasure um, or the reward that you earn as a result of your, your big adventure, your quest? Okay, now we, we've done all the horrible, ugly, scary stuff. Um, and the climax is over. Now we're in part three. We're on the return. And stuff happens here too. This is this is a big part of the hero's journey. Um, I know I read a criticism of this. Um, it was a criticism of modern storytelling that this part of the story is always understated or underemphasized. It's just like, oh yeah, you beat the villain. Okay, you come home, you reunite with your family. Uh, happy, happily ever after. There, but the, there's more to that. <laughs> so let let's get into that. So the return. So question twenty one. Um, in what ways have you expanded your comfort zone? So in the beginning, you had the small comfort zone. You were brave and you stepped out of it. And how has that shifted? How has that changed for you? What are you willing to do now that you are less afraid of or more confident in that you didn't have before? Question 22, what discourages you from returning to your previous location, role, or zone of comfort? So do you have to go back to your old job? Um, do you have to physically go back to a location that you left? Um, or was it more of just like a comfort zone thing that you did an activity um, that expanded your zone of comfort? Um, but why would you not want to return? What? So like in a real life scenario, let's say like there are people who go and they travel the world and they don't want to come back because they feel like now I know things about the world that I didn't before and this looks so much better. Life is so much better here in this corner of the world than the one that I left. So that happens. Um, question 23. In what unexpected ways did you receive aid on your journey? So um, that's another theme that pops up in storytelling is when... Um, uh, yeah, so you're about to slay the dragon, but the dragon looks like he's got the upper hand. And you're like, shit, oh no, like, what's the hero going to do? And then someone comes in or at the last minute and, and brings some hope and changes, changes the dynamic and changes the scenario. So... I love the example of in Jurassic Park. The, the raptors have got the upper hand and they've, court, they've circled the people and they're like, shit, how are we going to get out? And then along comes the T-Rex and like chomps down on the, on the raptor and now the raptors are attacking the T-Rex, which means the people can escape. You know, another example was in Star Wars, um, you know, Luke is about to destroy the Death Star, but he's got these TIE fighters on his back. And in swoops Han Solo at just the right moment. And so how did you receive aid um, on your journey that helped you when you least expected it? Uh, where am I on my list here? Ah, yes, 24. What new satisfaction have you found on this journey? So go back to, I think it was question number two, the question about what dissatisfies you. So has that changed? Are you now satisfied about what you were dissatisfied with before? How, how has that changed? 25, what have you learned about yourself? So what do you know that you're capable of now that you weren't sure you were capable of before? And 26, how have you changed, grown, evolved? Um, just an elaboration on the last question, I think. Um, you know, what's different about you? How will you handle situations differently from here on? Um, 27, what wisdom do you have now that you can share with others? 
So what would you, <laughs> you might now be that old man wizard figure on somebody else's next adventure. So what wisdom are you going to relay or pass on um, and teach others after your experiences? Now 28, how are you received by those who knew you before you, your journey began? So af often, okay, so you are in this common world, you know yourself, you know where you fit in, you know your relationship with other people, you leave, you change, you grow, you evolve, you come back. Now you have changed. How are people responding to your change? Are they welcoming you? Do you have more respect? Or are, do they think you don't fit in or you don't get them anymore? Is it maybe not as welcoming as you expected? Are you, are, you know, how, 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 is, how has the relationship changed? And then that relates to question 29. How do you see them? So with back to our kind of real life travel um, example, these world travelers, um, maybe they don't want to leave. And when they come back, um, they have all this knowledge and experiences um, with them now and they see the people from their their home world or common world now as kind of ignorant and narrow-minded and they struggle um, with relating to those people so has that has something similar like that happened to you how do you see them and how do they see you how is the relationship with the people you knew before changed are they still your people or is it maybe time to move on to new people. And then number 30, draw a card for a hint or a clue at your next adventure. So that was, um, you see that often, especially in modern movies where there's like, everything's been resolved, everyone's home, everyone's happy, but there's this clue that there's a new adventure about to start. So it's kind of like that scene at the end where something goes, you know, something blows up in the background and you're like, oh, okay, on to the next thing. So what is the clue? Where do you go next? Where do you go from here? So what happens to you? Draw a card for just a hint at your next adventure. So that is my September tarot challenge. Now there are ways you can use this. I'm, I want this to be completely open and completely flexible. Um, this can be a tool that you use for fun, just to exercise your tarot reading skills. You don't have to apply it to your own life. You can apply it to some made up character. Um, or you could use it for personal development and you could do if you're, you know, you don't want to do the Instagram thing where it's like one card a day or one question a day um, and you want to do this in another way. You just want to do it for personal. You don't want to share this with anyone. That's totally fine, too. So you could bang out 30 cards um, and you get a great. That's kind of what I did. And I got this really cool. A really cool story and storyline um, that I could work with. And if I was a writer. I might want to use that and go with that and expand on the prompts from all the cards. Um, you can apply questions to yourself. Um, you could do, as I said, you could do one card every day for the 30 days. That's kind of how I designed it. Um, but you can also kind of check in, like maybe right now you are in the middle of a journey. You are in the middle of a change, a transition, an adventure. And maybe, you know, you're like, oh, no, I'm, I've passed the threshold. Part one is in the past for me. Um, right now, I'm, I'm stuck on trial number three, and I don't know what I'm going to do. So maybe that's where, where you want to start um, and just go from there or just check in with where you are now, you know, or maybe, maybe you've kind of been there and come back and it's that forming relationships with your previous people that you're struggling with. Um, so just like kind of use these questions and, and check in um, with wherever you are now in your current adventure, your current journey, and just start from there. These questions might be helpful to kind of help you overcome those challenges. Oh yeah, the other note that I wanted to say was um, because you might be at a different point in your journey than the way I phrase the questions, you know, rephrase the tense. You know, if it's past tense, future tense, present tense, like be flexible with this. Use it for however you see potential value in it. Um, 
But as I said, I will be doing this on Instagram just to see how it goes. If you've never done a tarot challenge before, how it works is you you follow the prompts. Um, day one would be question number one. You take share a picture of the cards you drew to answer that question. And then you um, use the tag uh, Heroes Journey Challenge and you would tag me as well so that I know um, you're a participant and I can follow you. And, and uh, it helps spread the word as well so that people know where you found it and then they can participate as well. Um, yeah, I think that about summarizes it. So again, my workshop will be August the 20th on Facebook Live, and I will record it if you can't make it. I, it starts at 4.30 um, Pacific Standard Time. And um, yeah, I hope you guys will check it out and join me so I'm not alone <laughs> talking to myself for an hour and a half about geeky things and tarot cards. Um, I'd love to see you guys there. And look out for this hero's journey on my blog and on Instagram, and I'll briefly mess it, mess bleh, bleh, um, mention it in my webinar as well. It's kind of how I'm going to wrap it up and just say like, hey, here's a tool and some prompts you can use to help you on your path. And yeah, that's it. I hope to see you around the interwebs. Join me at my webinar, and I will see you next time. Stay shiny and keep sparkling, guys. Bye.